All right, so we got the fallen dark angels explained by an Australian. It's a good video. G'day, guys and gal. The dark angels were the greatest legion hands down. They had deep, rich lore. No, 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 no. No, they, I mean, I, listen, I, I beg to differ. Obviously, the Salamanders were literally number one, but we'll let it slide. The lion is a chef's kiss, and they were powerful as hell. Literally, we'll Horus is boogeyman, hence why he sent them across the galaxy and then sent the Night Lords to slow them down rather than attempting to ambush and kill them at the start of the heresy. However, for all their glory, victories, and power, they have a very dark secret. A secret that has actually made the modern day Dark Angels quite pathetic. That secret being the Fallen Angels, close to half of the Dark Angel Legion who betrayed the Lion. The interesting thing about the Fallen, as they are called, is that they are not necessarily traitor marines or have to have interesting chaos. Most of them are actually still kind of loyal to the Emperor and the ideals of the Imperium. However, with some convoluted lore, a bit of chaotic influence, and the Lion having bad social skills, the Dark Dark Angel Legion was fractured, putting the Lion into a 10,000 year coma and destroying the Dark Angel's homeworld of Caliban. So we did learn about that whole like uh, coma situation and stuff like that. I think we did like a whole like hour long reaction. I think like, you know, we obviously like, you know, I, you know, I said what I needed to say. I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you, the whole thing about like, you know, the Lion and stuff like that, waking up and like, you know, him regaining like, you know, he like him kind of like regaining like his memory and you know, him going through like all the mental battles and stuff like that. Uh, while still, you know, carrying along, like, I mean, he kind of, I don't want to say he soloed his way back to glory, but at the same time, he had, like, a little help and stuff like that, um, it was a little hard for him to, like, accept people, but, I mean, he accepted some people, whatever, um, and again, that whole thing about, like, the mental game and stuff, like, I think he, um, he had, like, one final battle in his head to where, like, every time, like, he would, like, close his eyes, he would meditate and go back to, like, a, uh, like, a forest place, where it was like, a, I think it was like all like a mental game for him. Um, but yeah, hearing like his comeback story, bro, that, that was actually a pretty good story. I think West Hammer broke that down. If you guys haven't actually reacted to that, uh, not reacted to that, but if you guys haven't uh, watched that, make sure you guys go check that out on the channel. It was like an hour long video, whatever. I'll probably like put like, put, like one of those little pop-ups at the top of the screen uh, for you guys to go check that out. But that was actually a really like nice breakdown by West Hammer. Um, so yeah. It's all very messy, but quite fun, and definitely worth the next 10 minutes or so of your life. Before we get started, yes, I've been missing for a week because YouTube banned me for a week. The reason was Timmy. See, Timmy has been gone for a while now, but the little shit keeps haunting me. On a four-year-old video I made, I went especially hard on little Tim Tim, which YouTube considered to be cyberbullying and harassment towards Ooh. a minor. Even though Timmy is a 30-year-old fictional man who has zero testosterone, hence he never appeared to grow up. As you can imagine, the purge of Timmy from old videos has begun, as no joke is worth losing my entire income, job, and livelihood over. In the meantime, if you Facts. guys are looking for ways to support the channel, then the best bet is the major minis or the Patreon. Today we'll go over the lore of the Fallen, detailing why they turned against the Lion, what they did, and where they are now. Now, uh, let's get into let's it. Let's get into it! Let's go, man. To uncover the truth of this loyalty fiesta, we gotta go back to the beginning. Back right. to Caliban, which is the only planet that could compete in deadliness level to Katachan. Caliban was a beautiful and lush world, verdant forests, clear skies, and demonic beasts that would massacre the populace. See, Caliban had been cum blasted by warp energy in the past, which mutated a decent amount of its fauna into semi-chaotic beasts. To combat literal genocide, the people of Caliban created the Knightly Orders, brave men and women who would ride out and hunt down the beasts, or at least protect villages. As they still maintained basic technology, like firearms and low-level power armor, they were able to hold back the beasts, but never really triumph. The reason why I'm mentioning this is because Caliban low-key being a chaos corrupted world is important and is directly tied to the creation of the fallen. Okay. After a millennia of beasts and the knights more or less being stalemated, Primarch Lionel Johnson's capsule crash landed into the forests of Caliban, forever altering the planet's destiny. Now the lion did eat a bit of shit with his landing site. He was deep in beast territory, so the dude literally grew up punching on with three-headed tigers that shot acid out of their dick holes. Oh. Eventually, he was recovered by the legendary knight Luther, who would also go on to become the founder of the Fallen. Luther adopted the lion and taught him to be the knight he is today, first as a father, then as a brother. Together, they were unstoppable. They brought the knightly orders together and purged Caliban of the beasts. Luther was a Damn, bro. So they, bro, they were like Shaq and Kobe. Wowzers. And I didn't actually know that the, that the lion grew up like that. That's, that's probably why, like, obviously, like, you know, the lion, bro, like, he's, bro, he's the lion. But at the end of the day, I did not know that, that he grew up in, like, a, like, a harsh, kind of like a, like a harsh condition and stuff like that. Wow. 
he was kind of like a prodigy in a way. Legend in his own right, shining bright despite the shadow cast by the lion. They were inseparable and this trend continued even when the emperor arrived and took the lion into the great crusade. However, this is where shit went to shit. In one of the early campaigns, the Dark Angels took on a world that had secretly fallen to Slaanesh. As a part of their ruse, the Sluts snuck a nuclear warhead onto the Lion's flagship, which Luther discovered. However, a deep repressed jealousy within Luther made him hesitate. <coughs> if he left the ship, let the nuke go off and kill the Lion, then he would be the greatest of the Dark Angels. The Legion would be his and the Lion's shadow would be forever. Yo, Luther, for real? Yo, Luther, for real, bro? All because you want to get acknowledged, bro? Like, for you really thought of Like, you really sat there and thought? Like, bro, if there's, like, a nuclear bomb, bro, take that thing out, bro. Throw that thing to Saturn. Don't sit there and think. What you thinking about? You, you want to be the greatest of what? Why can't y'all just work as a team, bro? I told you. And I'll always say this, bro, the man's, bro, a man's greatest weakness, whether it's in real life, video games, whatever, a man's greatest weakness is the ego. Why can't you just put your ego aside to, and, and just work together, bro? Everybody can eat. Everybody can win. Wow. Yo, it always got to be that one character, bro. Like what? Go on. See, Luther was a one in a billion guy. Without the lion, he still would have changed Caliban forever, likely achieving a great victory over the beasts and being forever known. But the lion is a one in a sextillion to the power of my asshole kind of guy. So Luther felt like he had been robbed of his chance of glory. Zahariel, a dark angel librarian, also discovered the nuke at a similar time to when Luther changed his mind and decided to help get rid of it. The two dark angels ejected the nuke, saving the lion and the dark angel high command. Oh, okay. Now nice. the lion never knew exactly what happened. <clears throat> Neither Luther nor Zahariel told anyone about Luther's moment of spurginess. However, the lion is known for his instincts. So while he does suck at dealing with people or picking up on social cues, his gut usually leads him on the right path. You know, nice. Except for that one time he got tricked into giving Perturabo super weapons that were then used to devastate loyalist forces, but yeah, nobody's perfect. It's fine. They're so they're following they're his yeah. gut, the Lion banished Luther, Zahariel, and a number of other Astartes, both Terran and Calibanite, back to Caliban under the pretense of training more Dark Angels for the Legion. This deeply upset Luther and his time sent them boys back to training. He said, bro, since you can't even, he said, since you can't even make a decision right, bro, I'm going to send you and that bum back to training. I'ma send you and that bum back to training. Since you, since you don't want to, since you want to, since you don't want to be, ob be obvious and, and, and look at a nuke and be like, hmm, what should I do with this? Hmm, you know what? Should I? He says, since you want to hesitate. See, to be honest with you, bro, I don't hesitate. That's my actions. I just do it. Snap, crackle, and pop. That's what I do. I don't sit there and look at the situation and dissect it like we're in chemistry class. No. She said, oh, since you want to make a decision, I'm going to send you and that broke bum back to class. Go, go pick up on some lessons. That's what he basically just said. It's not my words. That's his. I went on, despite many, many new Dark Angels being created and sent off to join the Legion, Luther became ever more resentful as less and less communication came from the floor. As he should, bro. You a rookie. How dare you sit there and hesitate? Are you dumb? If you see a nuke, bro, you better throw that thing like Tom Brady. Are you stupid? What are you talking about? Duh, go back to class. Eventually, the name Luther stopped being spoken amongst the Dark Angels under the command of the Lion, and he was more or less forgotten. Facts. On Caliban, Luther Forget did what bomb. he was ordered to with extreme effectiveness. The Dark Angels became one of the largest legions. However, it wasn't sunshine and rainbows in paradise. Caliban's culture and forests were being torn down to make room for imperial settlements and mechanicus manufacturing. The very soul of the world was being cut down tree by tree. The lion wasn't a super sentimental guy, so he didn't really give a fuck. But for Luther, this was terrible. At a similar time, a rebellion from the disgruntled knightly orders of old, combined with a chaos demon at the heart of the world that was waking up, made shit real cooked. Luther fell into a deep depression as chaos began to infect his mind with doubt. With everything that was happening, Luther decided that the lion had abandoned them and didn't give a shit about them. On top of that, Caliban was getting turbo raped by the Imperium's <coughs> industry, and it seemed as if the demon of Caliban was actually getting summoned by Terran born sorcerers. Luther convinced himself that if the Imperium ever came back to Caliban, they would see it as a lost cause and destroy the world. So when Horus began the heresy, Luther quietly seceded Caliban from the Imperium with the support from 
were most of the Dark Angels with him. The Dark Angels who he had trained and raised. Dark Angels who had never even seen the Lion. The idea was that he would defend Caliban during the Heresy and wait to see who would emerge as the victor. All I, see, all, all I hear is a bunch of trickery. It's so crazy because in, in a lot of these situations, and I like to compare this to like real life sometimes. See, sometimes you may look at this like one thing from like this angle, but then at the same time, like, you know, another person from this angle, they might look at the same thing and they might see something different. You get what I'm saying? And this is why I feel like a lot of like, I feel like a lot of stuff happen. I feel like a lot of that, like a lot of the, uh, the example that I just pointed out, I feel like that happens in Warhammer, uh, in Warhammer a lot. I feel like a Warhammer, bro. I feel like one Primarch thinks that they that they got left or one Marine thinks they got left or whatever. One group of Marines think that they got left by their Primarch or whatever. And then, you know, they think this, or then, then they do this, but then the Primarch comes back and then he's like, yo, what's up, everybody? And then, then you know, they reject him or they try to kill him or whatever and all of this. Bro, it's just a bunch of, like, misunderstanding. It, bro, why, why can't we be friends? Why can't we be friends? Why can't we be friends? Why, bro, why can't we, why can't we just sit here in a circle and just be friends? Why can't we just sit here and just tell both sides of the story? It's a story. There's always two sides. Why can't we all just be friends? But obviously, the Silentmanders could literally never tell you and your faction to go sit down and go through therapy. Because mine don't. As a matter of fact, like I said before, see, my, listen, my faction, the Silentmanders, We've never had problems. As a matter of fact, bro, bro, we pull up to the meetings in Lamborghinis. We don't have problems at all. Bro, bro, our accounts, millions of dollars. Bro, that's all we do, bro. We get up every day, bro. We hug up, bro. We hug our loved ones, bro, and we make millions. That's what we do. To all y'all other factions, bro. Bro, go keep, bro, go, go keep being miserable. Go keep destroying y'all own factions over misunderstandings. Because guess what? The Salamanders could literally never. I'm sorry. You guys pull up in scooters while we pull up in Lamborghinis. That's, it, it is what it is. I'm sorry. <laughs> then he would treat with them, but attempt to maintain Caliban's independence. Now, unlike most times people go full retard and betray the Imperium, Luther and his fallen weren't these blood crazed psychos. They arrested Imperial officials and commanders and even showed mercy to Dark Angels that weren't on board, imprisoning them instead. I mean, you know, at least initially. It got a bit more fucked up later on. They didn't just become oh, a chaos cult and start masturbating with sandpaper or some cooked shit like that. They also had pretty good justification. Luther and Zahariel had saved the line from the nuke, and the reward was banishment and exile. The Imperium was also stripping Caliban bed. No, they didn't. No, 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 no. Don't try to. No. They did not. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. No. Let's not try to manipulate this here. The last time I checked, Luther hesitated. What you hesitating for? What are you. I'm sorry. Listen. I may be a Warhammer new booty, but I'm going to be honest with you. L let's, let's use a real life example. Hmm. Let's say. Uh. Okay. Let's say I'm sitting down on the couch somewhere and I'm eating lunch. And let's say my friend was sitting on that couch over there and he can see me and everything else going on over here. Let's say that's the example. So I'm sitting down eating lunch and my friend's sitting down over there and he can see my he, he can see my side that I can't see. Let's say a guy walks up to me on my blind side and and, and he's debating. He's like, mm, I don't know. He's looking at me. And he's about to hit me. You don't think that my friend should be like, yo, what's up? You don't think my friend should just should, should instantly jump up and be like, yo, wh what's going on? Or like, yo, bro, he, yo, 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 move out the way. Or, or you don't think I should get a warning? Or you don't think that he should hurry up and pop up and get up? You don't think that, like, you don't think that he should, like, you know, try to protect me like i can see if he says something and then boom i got hit right at least he said something bro luther bro you saw the nuke you didn't instantly pick up the nuke and throw it no bro you thought about you had evil intent at first the first thing you thought about was was oh my god well if i let the nuke go then they can die and i could be the, that's that was your first thought bro that, that's <laughs> It, it, you sat there. You sat there and you manifested that. You thought about that, bro. You was like, hmm. Like, you, you worked out this 12-step plan. 
bro, like, what are we talking about? You, you thought you was about to get love for that? No. Because if I find out that you didn't instantly throw that thing away and you let that nuke for like two minutes to just sit there, then you throw it away because you thought about all the repercussions that can happen from it. Brother, <laughs> you're not... <on laughs> You're not on the side, bro. You're not on the winning side anymore. I'm sorry. Yo, Luther, you're out of here. As a matter of fact, you know, I'm not even going to ban you to the shadow realm. Go back to training. Go back to training with that bum that, that, that threw away the nuke with you. Oh, yeah, you're with them, too. Go back to training with that bum. You're not, you're not welcome with us. Are you dumb? You tell me you see a nuke and you think about, mm, well, if I let the nuke go, then everybody else can die and I can reclaim and I can reclaim my glory to fame. <laughs> that's how you look. Look at Luther. That's how you look. You thought we about to feel bad? Oh well, you know he did. He did throw the nuke off the thing. Yeah, but you thought about it though. You sat there and you thought about it. <laughs> you thought I'm about to, you know, sit there and be like, oh well. I mean, even though you know he did find a nuke and he waited five minutes, you know. He waited a whole, you know, uh, Twitch ads, you know, to go by and stuff like that. It's fine. We'll, we'll just let it go by. No. <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm, <laughs> maybe that's just me. But yeah, but Luther, you're out of here. Literally destroying their world. It's important to note that Luther also wasn't this evil mastermind. He was upset, misguided, and was being subtly nudged by the corruption within Caliban. He never really meant things to go this far. It's by far my favorite law regarding people turning from the Imperium. Some of the fallen were embracing chaos. Others were loyal to the Emperor, but not the Lion. Some were just loyal to Luther and Caliban. There was definitely not a united front, which created a lot of cool personal and ideological... Man, if I wasn't here, I would have been loyal to all three. I would, I would have been loyal to the Emperor, to the Lion, and to the Salamanders. I would have been loyal to all three. But, you know, but maybe that's just me, you know? I take that back. I, I would have been loyal to the Salamanders and the Emperor. On flicks. Eventually, shit does get out of hand as a loyalist chapter returns from the fleet to Caliban and is killed by Luther and his fallen, damaging Caliban in the process. Some fallen, including Zahariel, actually leave Caliban to help the legendary Dark Angel Corswain and the loyalists protect Terra, further compounding the confusions and complexities of the fallen's motives. Literally, only the Alpha Legion's motives are more convoluted. By the time the Lion returns to Caliban after the end of the Siege of Terra, Luther is too far gone and fires planetary defense weapons at the lion's fleet. The lion rages and attacks in turn and duels Luther, who has become a chaos champion by this point, wounding his old mentor and brother. However, the lion hesitates before the kill, allowing Luther to lash out with power and wound the lion. But then the same shit happens. Luther cannot bring himself to kill his adoptive son and brother, so in a fit of rage, the chaos gods remove the power given to Luther and they create a warp vortex on Caliban. <laughs> you, bro, you don't got the killer instinct, bro. You afraid, bro? You you don't got the, <laughs> you you simply don't got the guts, bro. Yo, Luther, you don't got the guts to do nothing. <laughs> you don't got the guts to do nothing, bro. You had the choice of letting the nuke go off, and you could have, you know, remain number one. You couldn't do that. You were scared, and then you couldn't even finish off the lion. What happened? Cat got your tongue. They was like, oh, you want to hesitate again? Skidoops, let's take those powers away from you. You don't got the killer instinct, bro. And that's it, 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 bro. Listen, it is what it is, bro. What's bro? Hey, yo, Luther, you confused or something? Which one are you on, bro? You on the good side or the bad side? Let us know, cause I'm gonna be honest with you, bro. You're you're, you're confusing us. I don't know what side you're on. Uh, two seconds ago, you care about the guy. Two seconds, uh, two seconds later, you you want to be number one. Like, bro, what's one? Is it, bro? Bro, bro, pick a side, bro. <laughs> Pick a side, because I'm going to be honest with you, bro. If I was you, bro, I would have been got rid of the lion. Sucking thousands of fallen into the warp, with the lion being taken to the safety of the rock by the watchers in the dark. But that's whilst just Luther me. is taken by the loyalist dark angels. Luther is ashamed of himself, his guilt breaking his sanity. He sees the folly of what he did, wounding the lion, bringing about the destruction of Caliban and dealing with chaos. The joke went too far. He was then locked within the bowels of the rock. Meanwhile, the thousands of other fallen that had been sucked into the warp storm were periodically spat out at different times. Some were spat out decades later, others centuries or even millennium. Some are yet to appear 10,000 years later. 
As I said, the Fallen were not unified under one philosophy. Some of the Fallen fell to chaos. Others think chaos is uber gay, so they have just become renegades or mercenaries. Others even seek out the Dark Angels to repent their sins and face execution. The Loyalist Dark Angels see the Fallen as their greatest shame and have directed most of their resources into keeping their existence a secret and hunting them out. They feel as if the only way to atone for their sins is to capture every single Fallen, have them repent their sins, and then execute them. This has turned modern day Dark Angels into a bit of a sad meme, as they will abandon war zones mid battle if they get a whiff of a Fallen somewhere else. For his part, Luther has been sitting in that jail cell for 10,000 years, asking for the Lion's forgiveness in fits of insanity. Sometimes he does become lucid and regains his mind for a time, usually when an especially chatty Dark Angels chapter master is promoted and visits him often. However, the truth of the Fallen, that being life isn't black and white and that they had justifications, can be too much for a loyal Dark Angel. With chapter master Mordoran blowing his own brains out in front of Luther after having a manic fit. With the opening of the Great Rift, a demonic horde invaded the rock, which allowed Luther to escape. It is said that he is now marshalling the fallen to him, forming a large army, but his motives are still unknown. My theory is that upon the lion's imminent awakening, he will unite the loyalist Dark Angels back into a legion, which Luther will then confront with his fallen army. Instead of battling, however, Luther will pledge the service and allegiance of the fallen to the lion, creating the most powerful army in the entire setting and setting up the lion and his reformed Dark Angel legion as one of the most powerful forces in the galaxy. I'm sure it won't go super smoothly, but I doubt the lion is going to awaken just to have Dark Angels vs. Fallen 2 electric boot. Now a few of you are probably wondering why I haven't mentioned Cypher, who after Luther is the most famous of the Fallen. Well that's because Cypher's lore is literally Alpha Legion plus level of confusing, especially since there's been like three or four Cyphers and half of those have been loyal and the other half have been Fallen. And we don't even know the current Cypher's real identity. Is it Zach? Who is this? And why does he have him? This better not be who who I think it who I think it is. This better not be a salamander. Oh no, you got me twisted like tea. Oh no, 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 no. Ariel, is it Corswain? Is it Omegon? So I refer you to my dedicated Cypher video where we do a bit more of a deep dive uh, into the character and his relation to the Fallen. I just uh, hope to fucking God that GW doesn't go full retard mode and turn the Fallen into another Chaos faction, ruining all of their carefully crafted nuance and complex motives in the process. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, then Patreon. Shout out to um oh, okay yeah let's just pause that thing right here. Shout out to Major Kill. Um, if that was a Simon or Diaz, then we're not we're not checking out. Yeah, we're not checking out him. Yeah, I'm, yo, yo, if, yo, if this is a Simon, bro, I got beef with him. Let's be real. Other than that, man, comment down below, man. What do y'all think about this? Uh, no wonder people said that the Fallen Angels are a joke. A lot of you guys were not lying when you said that, man. The Fallen Angels are down horrendously bad. I'm gonna be honest with you. Uh, I mean, I'm gonna be honest with you. I mean, we did hear obviously like, you know, the lion, he's awoken, he's uh, awakened now from like the coma or whatever. So uh, hopefully, you know, him and the, him and Luke can like, you know, piece it up and stuff like that, man. Maybe see you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. And I will see you guys at the next time out. And peace out.